presentation anymore. It's about complete dis oops. What's going to cut in the time? Oh my god. Um, uh, stop the watch. Stop the watch. All right. All right. Okay. There's the, the immediate eater. We are now moving to the aggregation point. So, so uh, blowing it into a, a million pieces. And this isn't re this isn't about fragmentation. It's about complete disaggregation where consumers repackage content the way they want to. And this is a problem for us. What I think of is this is kind of like a post-content media landscape. And when you think about that, you know, really what that means is that by combining information, communication, and content all together, it's creating real challenges that sort of strike to the heart of what the media buying and planning, planning industry is all about. Content has been an aggregator. Content has been a, a, a targeting signal that we've relied on for a long time, and the Internet's making that more difficult. Not only that, but consumers are moving through this at a lightning pace. They spend less than 40 seconds on a page. And the greatest invention about the internet, which is the hyperlink, is really creating these disjointed experiences that are very difficult to get your head around as an advertiser in terms of how to kind of manage a session or a customer experience. <laughs> Advertising used to work a lot better in the first wave when it was about navigation, because when you think about hyperlinks and you think about advertising, navigation made a lot of sense. We could redirect flows with search ads, with direct response display ads. Now it's different. It's about time, and that's what we're struggling about with when you're ready, any of you seen this Tom Cruise movie called, uh, what was it called again, Michael? Minority Report. Minority Report. We see this world of complete sort of immersion in, in, in impressions. And we're starting to see that as a larger and larger swath of our existence being digitized. We're getting, moving into a world of sort of impression ubiquity, which is also another challenging issue because that's the currency on which media is based. Further, we have these packages of content that were sort of staggered out in a very predictable way. Now what we see is real time takes prime time. And not only is that an unbelievable opportunity for advertisers, it's also unbelievably hard to get your head around and make sense of because it happens so quickly. So I think that we've got to figure out how to get back into the flow, how to make advertising work in this world of disaggregation of, and, and fluidity, and that's the challenge that we're, we're, really, we're really faced with here. We've got to think about sessions rather than pages. How do we manage an exposure with a consumer over time as opposed to this disaggregated page-based experience? And streams versus boxes. We have this model which kind of looks like print advertising where you had you know, discrete chunks or banner ads, and now we got this kind of fluid media experience that we have to make sense of. I got two thoughts about how we kind of do this down the line, and these are sort of aspirational. The first one is what I would call the API. Now, many of you may know what an API is, many of you may not. It's an application programming interface, and all I'll say about it is, if you think, say, you're uh, uh, a company that creates music, if you had an API, you would hand out the sheet music and the bed tracks, and people could create music all around you. It allows you to syndicate an experience. Well, I think that we got the name, and we got the acronym, we just have to change what it means. So instead of an API, we've got to change it to like an application programming interface. We've got to think of it as an advertising programming inter interface. And what that would do is combine the best of an ad server, which is about control and managing the currency of advertising, with the syndication of experiences and ability to mash up, which is, what which is what an API allows you to do, like taking Google Maps and overlaying content on top of it. So, you know, you'd have a library, and that library would be things like services and content, things that were helpful to consumers, video, games, etc. And then what we, and rules and behaviors. We would be able to localize that and make sense of it. It would be channel aware. But what we would be able to do is essentially distribute innovation, much like APIs do, which is a very powerful thing. Push it out to the people that are creating ag aggregation points, creating experiences, creating blogs. So I think a related point that's impossible not to address, if you want to look at this idea, is when context is fluid, data is your bow. You need to get your head around data. And I think that it's just exploding this issue on the internet or broadly in the industry right now. We've got to figure out how to do it. We can't let it get consolidated with three groups. I think we'll create a real disequilibrium in the industry. Our thought for that is what, we, what I would call PML. And it's people markup language. And it's a universal structure for uh, preferences, demographic information, interactive in interaction history uh, about the consumer. And it exists on three layers. There's a public layer that can be shared broadly. There would be proprietary layers where people like networks and publishers and agencies could overlay proprietary data. And certainly a private layer where the consumer could manage that session. So what that would end up looking like is you know, a, a site w w might integrate content in a very simple way that might look like something that we have today. right? You might run part of the stream as pre-roll or inside the video, or you might run a, a video ad, but you would know about the session. 
you would know about the consumer's interactions previously. So you might elect, if your content was powerful enough, to disrupt the experience and bring in a dis uh, interrupt event. One minute, I gotta move. You might be able to get it into the feed, right? But the great thing about an API is you could start to mash it up. You could use uh, social and preference data to roll it into the experience, bring in other APIs like maps. You might even roll it into more complex uh, environments like a game or, or, or a virtual world. And I think that's the power of it. And it's the only way we're going to keep up with the media world. The media world today is ahead of the advertising world. We've got to catch up, and that's the issue. So clearly there's challenges here. How do we value attention in a world where impressions are controlled by a distributed group of people? I think the industry's got to get their head around it. Blame the tools, guys. We have a huge amount of work to do in terms of innovation around how we deliver experiences through this disaggregated network. Tools are a very significant issue. Friction is the enemy. There's a number of, of, of people that have proven that you can monetize digital media meaningfully. If you take the friction up for consumers, think iTunes, think Hulu, think Kindle. There's lots of opportunities. This is about efficiency. I think we've been studying efficiency long enough. It's about culture. And if we can't figure out how to do this, advertising on the internet will never, will never be what it could be. We've got to have a medium that allows us to create and influence culture. Thank you.